That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Dry, uh, Australian mystery thriller being released by IFC Films, uh, May 21st, 2021, starring Eric Bana, uh, who we call Eric Banania in our house. Uh, it's based on a novel by Jane Harper, uh, and it's directed by Robert Connolly. Do you know this director's other work? Um, no, directed five or six other things that I have not seen. Uh, it's 2014 film Paper Planes, which is kind of a YA film, uh, was in Berlin in a sidebar. And then he's probably best known for Belibo, uh, which stars Anthony LaPaglia, who he's worked with several times, and Oscar Isaac. All right. Unfortunately, I think that uh, the title of this movie is appropriate because this uh, movie was quite dry to me. <laughs> a testament to that is normally I have my iPad filled with notes, mm -hmm. even for like the most basic story. And I don't have any notes for this one. I just didn't find anything interesting about it. And the story is pretty, as you would say, it's like a pulp. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the novel, I'm sure, which I haven't read, I'm sure it's kind of like pulp fiction, like something you buy at the airport and read on a plane, which sometimes, you know, makes for excellent um, cinema. Yeah, this has a lot going on, but it just amounted to like, meh. Okay. The story is, we're in an Australian, like a small Australian town. Kiwara, regional Australia. Where a murder-suicide has occurred. Mm -hmm. So a man has killed his wife, one of his children, and himself, it would appear. Okay. Eric Banya plays a federal agent named Aaron. He's a federal agent, but his work has nothing to do with this murder-suicide. He's in town visiting because the man who... Um, committed this murder, Luke, is an old friend of his. They were friends as teenagers. So he's come back for the funeral. All right. So Luke and Aaron have history because they were friends. And we understand that when they were like 17, there was an incident where it was Luke, Aaron, and then two girls, Gretchen and Ellie. They were all out like down by the river when Ellie was found dead. One of the girls was found dead in the river. And Aaron was suspected of doing it because they found a note he had given Ellie that day saying, hey, meet me at the river later today. But he and Luke decided to cover for each other and say that they were out rabbit hunting. But the parents of Ellie and other people didn't believe that. And... Aaron was kind of like he and his father were harassed and bullied enough that they decided to leave mm -hmm. the town. So Aaron has not been back in 30 years. But he's back for this funeral. And the parents of Luke mm -hmm. basically strong arm Aaron because he's a federal agent and they allude to like some case he like some famous Australian case he investigated. So they're saying, you need to find out what happened to our son because we know he wouldn't do this. You know he wouldn't do this. We think that maybe it revolves around some farm, the farmland he owned. Mm -hmm. And maybe he owed money to some like bad guys and they did it. He says, I don't want to be involved. But they say, you owe us because we all know you weren't out shooting rabbits. All right. Back when Ellie died. Back when Ellie died. So there's a local <clears throat> sheriff who had already sort of investigated. What's his name? Greg, played by Keir O'Donnell. Who I did kind of like. I think everyone in the film, their acting is fine. Yeah, the acting is yeah. pretty solid. Okay, so now Greg, the local law enforcement person, and Aaron are out here trying to figure out what's going on. But just to wrap all this up... <sighs> okay, so the two main things are what happened to Ellie 30 years ago in that river and... Was this murder-suicide really what they think it is? And are the two cases related? And are they related? Okay. The answer is no. All right. Luke, he killed his wife, or we think he killed his wife, Kelly? Karen. Karen. Karen worked at a school mm -hmm. as like, like doing bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And there's a principal named... Uh, Scott. Scott. Scott was stealing money from the school. And Karen found out about it and was going to and confronted him and obviously was going to tell on him and he didn't want to get in trouble. So he killed her mm -hmm. and her husband and their older kid who could have identified him, but they have a newborn he left alone. Mm -hmm. So that's that mystery. Mm -hmm. Ellie, as it seems, 
Aaron, so, you know, Aaron hasn't been back in 30 years. So Aaron goes to the site of where Ellie was found dead mm -hmm. 30 years later mm -hmm. and finds her backpack. <laughs> Just chilling in like a crevice. Pulls out the backpack, finds her journal. In the journal, she outlines how she was being abused. By her uh, father. By her father. Keep in mind... Ellie's father, M M Mal, mm -hmm. Mal, which means bad in French, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mal and her brother, Frank? Grant. Grant, which Grant is important. Mm -hmm. Mal and Grant have been harassing Aaron the entire time he's been in town investigating. Okay. In the journal, we see that Ellie was writing how her dad's trash. He's harassing her. He was abusing the mom. That's why the mom ran away. And it, she writes, if I run away, my dad says he's going to kill me. So I'm going to run away today. And then he kills her. So the dad of the dead girl in the river 30 years ago killed her. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that, that is it. That's it. <laughs> I was so unimpressed with the way this story was told. Yes. So the dry, of course, it, it, did you mention that the film tells us it's been almost a year since there's been any rain? Yeah, the opening scene, it, it, it is explained that it's been like 300 plus days since it's rained. So the... You know, so I think it's uh, ideal for like uh, fires. Yeah. So a metaphor for, um, you know, the growing tension that uh, is happening in this particular. Something's about area. to blow up. Yeah, basically. Um, and it doesn't ever really blow up. I, the ending. Let maybe, maybe let's start with the ending. I hate the trope of somebody discovering a diary at the last minute and all the answers are explained. Of course, it shows that he unwraps in his backpack. It's a dry area anyway, right? But I think it was in plastic or something. Um, there's such a there, there's a way more elegant way to have conveyed that. Um, yeah. Like the, why not? To me, the mother should have Ellie should have been going to meet her mother. Like to 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 abscond because her father's sexually molesting her or assaulting her or whatever, and then he drowns her in the river, and the mom shows up the same day like, "Where's my kid?" Meanwhile, we're all distracted because we think Aaron did it because of this other uh, circumstantial evidence, and then years later, the backpack is discovered, like it is, and then maybe there's correspondence between the mother and daughter in writing that sure. suggests the same thing and would be so much more elegant. There's just too much going on, like so many red herrings. Another problem is the trope of return library books, which we also just saw a better exchange of information with return library books than things seen and heard. But okay, this is important because, yeah. Yeah, uh, Karen had some checked out library books and um, her mother-in-law, uh, Julia, played, or uh, Barb, played by Julia Blake of the film Patrick, uh, which is an excellent film if you've ever seen it. And... Uh, so he's bringing the books back and, of course, discovers something in there. She'd written on the back of a piece of paper uh, with some other information, Grant, question mark. So he thinks... Me meanwhile, the other thing going on is nobody really knew what happened to Ellie, but everybody feels guilt because of they, they were lying. So Aaron has these library books, and he finds this paper that says Grant, question mark. So he automatically assumes that she's referring to Grant. Because the film is leading us to believe that it's Ellie's murder that's really what's caused this situation with Luke. And Grant is the, the, her brother. Right. Okay. And we are also led to believe that perhaps Grant, who's been interested in the farmland Luke owned, is maybe responsible so that he could buy it. Mm -hmm. So there's another direction. But then we find out that Grant is really referring to a $70,000 grant that was secured for the school that the principal stole. Right. So um, it's just like, then, okay. Then we also get that character. Gretchen. Um, no, but yes, but no. The guy who says he was with Luke that day shooting rabbits. Oh, uh, James Freshville, who was kind of a, came out with uh, Animal Kingdom in 2010. He was a, a rising star. He was in that movie Adrift. Uh, directed by Anne Fontaine with Robin Wright and Naomi Watts where the mothers are sleeping with the sons. Did I watch that? You watched it, you listened to it, How Did This Get Made about it. Yes, I did. Um, but James Freshville in a very minor supporting role, again as a red herring, who was, I guess, shooting rabbits with Luke on <laughs> the day this happened. But then of course Aaron's like, well that's not true, They're, he's alluding to what everyone says that we said we did 30 yeah. years ago. Okay. <laughs> and then there's Gretchen, uh, played by Genevieve O'Reilly, who, the, the, that quartet of teenagers were kind of incestuous, and you kind of get into that interplay, but there's a rekindled kind of romantic interest between uh, Aaron and Gretchen, but then she has this child uh, from a two-night stand, as she calls it, but he thinks Luke was the father. 
So then it's like, okay, so obviously these four teenagers back in the day were like romantically linked. Why do we need to know that maybe like one had slept with the other? Who cares? But then it's alluding to like, maybe she had a baby with Luke, right? So then that's like, maybe she's involved. It's just like, how many damn people? And I get it. I mean, you know, the, I don't know. Maybe if this were a comedy, it would have worked better yeah. to have. Because it's just too many. Like, in this small ass town, there's this major crime that occurs. And it's just like, yeah, it would make sense that everyone sort of have. Because then we even have like a fireman who, oh my God, first Aaron goes to like the town doctor saying like, can you tell me about her mental health and all the, what does she say about her husband? And the doctor's like, you know, I can't tell you that. Then we find this firefighter who Aaron discovers lied about something he said, but the firefighter's lying, lying because he's gay and he's hooking up with the doctor. Mm -hmm. Just one more random thing to throw in there that has nothing to do with like that anything. Was, that was James Fresh still again, yeah. Um, oh, that was him? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, it reminded me a lot of Little Things, the Little Things recently with Denzel and Jared Leto, uh, where, again, Denzel is this cop with a uh, mysterious past that comes back and he's t basically taking vacation time, personal time, to get involved yeah. in this case. And it comes very late in the game where Greg, the rookie sheriff, tells him, well, it's gotten around town that there's this federal agent who's out of his jurisdiction investigating himself. He's something he shouldn't. Yeah, where was that at the beginning? Like, nobody questioned that. That should have been numero uno. He's going around asking people, like, he's really in charge. Like, yeah. you shouldn't even... Like, I don't have to talk to you, and everyone knows it. Yeah. But, yeah, I do think... But the difference is, and why this movie does not work for me, is, first of all, I did... Well, like, you know, even with the little things, it's like... Even though that movie's ridiculous, it I, I was thoroughly engaged because... You know, you have these three actors hamming it the hell up. Yeah, that's true. But also, we're waiting for the ball to drop. Which it kind of leaves us in a sort of... Well, I think I... It was clear to me what happened. But we're waiting for the ball to drop. Mm -hmm. So at least... The, besides the chaos of these ridiculous performances, we're waiting to see what the truth is. But in this film, it's like... The acting is fine. The acting's I fine. I think the cinematography's nice. I like the backdrop of this dry-ass town. But it's like... By the time we get to the journal, I didn't care what happened to anyone. I don't care about this girl who died 30 years ago. Like, who cares? And then I don't care, like, this murder-suicide that it's not a... It's not like the like Aaron walked into a situation where everyone's like, there's foul play. and It's only his parents who are like every other parent on every Dateline episode who's like, there's no way my child did this. Okay. <laughs> it was shot by Stephen... Duccio, who did uh, The Invisible Man recently. With Which Elizabeth I really Ross. liked. Um, and quite a, uh, he shot the, several music videos, including Ghosts for Beyonce. Uh, oh. Uh, and, and, it, and several others. There's a kind of a deer hunter moment with the rabbits where Gretchen's... Because th that's a thing uh, in Australia. Uh, I don't, you probably haven't seen Rabbit Proof Fence. But um, where they have to control the rabbit population. But uh, she's, target, she's shooting rabbits and he... Uh, Aaron is supposed to shoot one with her and he can't, which is very reminiscent of a famous scene in The Deer Hunter. Uh, the opening, it, it opens quite well also um, with the, the bloody dead bodies right away in the opening scenes, which reminded me of The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith based on what part of the world is, this is in from Peter Weir. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just, it just quickly All becomes... These Sorry, all these flashbacks to them at 17 in the river, and it's just so repetitive. Like, we see the same, we see, like, what, three or four times well, in flashbacks, like, the dad and the brother dragging the body out of the river. And then they, they're they trying to also paint, because Aaron is not clear, because Aaron wasn't responsible. The audience is made clear for Ellie's death, but he thinks Luke might be. Because there's, an, there's a scene with him as teenagers where he's holding her under uh, the water to be funny. And she complains about, I could have drowned. And then, of course, shortly after, does show up as drowned. So he, it, it's weird how, you know, when you're lying about something and the kind of resulting guilt and lack of communication kind of snowball into what this is. But it's just not ultimately very compelling. It, it probably is better as a book. The only sort of interesting slash ridiculous scene in the film to me is when the principal realizes that the jig is up and Aaron, because Aaron and Greg are there and he knows that they know that he stole this money and he's responsible for this murder-suicide situation. 
this fool, his daughter's in school. We also spend time with the principal's family, like his um, wife and their child. And then the wife is connected to... Karen. Karen. It just, again, one more thing. But the principal, like, flees the school. Mm -hmm. So they go out looking for him. And, he, you know, they're in this, like, dry, arid uh, wasteland. And he... The principal runs, like, and goes and hides in, like, these dry-ass trees with, like, a, a can of gasoline, mm -hmm. douses himself, and sets himself on fire. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Aaron and Greg are pleading with him, like, don't do this. You're going to, you know, set off, like, a huge fire that's going to destroy the area. That was interesting, but then it's like, by the time we get to realizing it's him, I was so uninterested. That it was just like, okay, you're going to light yourself on fire. No, he does get the best line in the film because he has some offhand comment. There, there are subtle cues I was reading about. Like, he offers Budweiser, which is hard to get to Eric Bana's character. There are subtle cues about him being an outsider that we're being fed. Well, he even says that when we first... Uh... He, he right away says, like, well, we have money problems. Mm -hmm. Everyone has money problems. But, and then when they go to his house, he's like, yeah, we have money problems. But and I, I didn't write down the line, but he has the he's kind of a bitchy line about how it's the worst of both worlds, suburbs in the country or whatever. Yeah, he lives in, like, this rural area, but in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't have anything else to say. I feel bad because, again, I thought all the actors did a good job, and I think the movie looks really great, but... I mean, I'm sure Chelsea Handler will like it. Oh, because she likes Eric Banya. Yeah. What would you give this film? Two out of five. I would give it two out of five as well. Thank you. Bye.